Um, you can use a lot of different oils, uh, kerosene, uh, and you can even cut some of these oils with kerosene, which works really well. Um, it also helps keep your stones clean. Uh, lamp oil, although it's a little thin for a cutting fluid on its own, you could probably do the same thing you would with kerosene. Um, be aware, obviously, that those are very flammable. Um, you, although kerosene has a, a rather high flash point, you'd still just want to be aware and be safe with that. Um, vegetable oil would work. A lot of uh, food oils I would probably tend to stay away from in that they can spoil on the surface of the stone. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I saw a guy in the Middle East using ghee which is clarified butter. It was uh, about 130 degrees outside and it had already started to spoil on his stones. Uh, I, he used it a lot, uh, so I don't think he really cared, but it, it really, I mean, you could smell it. So if you're in your shop, it would get old really fast. Um, although he was doing some of the most amazing hand carving I've ever seen, so, you know, what does that say? Uh, <clears throat> find something that works for you, and I would recommend sticking with that oil. Um, simply because transferring back and forth can gum up your stones. If you are sharpening knives for the kitchen with your, uh, with your oil and your stones, I'd recommend uh, keeping those stones separate from ones out of your workshop um, and also using a food safe oil. Uh, I know the one on Norton Abrasive's site, once again, is, uh, is food safe or considered safe for use in areas with food. Um, but you know, a vegetable oil would be food safe. Um, check the mineral oil packaging. A lot of those are food safe um, for use on butcher blocks, that sort of thing. Um, so those would be acceptable to use in the kitchen. Uh, again, just check the label. A product that I've been using a lot lately um, is this Trihone system. <laughs> this one I, I borrowed from one of my best friends. Uh, who's probably wondering if he's ever going to get it back. Uh, if he's watching this, uh, you may not, because I really like it. Um, this is uh, from Woodcraft. This is the Trihone Honing Sharpening System. Uh, I looked online previous to shooting this video to see if I could get a price and some additional information on this product, and I was not able to find it on Woodcraft's website. I don't know if that's because it's been discontinued, or if it's because they're uh, limited quantities or, or what the deal is. Um, but I know there are many manufacturers who make a trihone system. Um, I think uh, King makes one, Spider Co. I believe makes one, Norton Abrasives makes one. Um, the Norton one is nice, it's actually a lot like this. Um, but this was a really good one. I when, I when I first borrowed it, I was a little skeptical. It seems kind of gimmicky, but it's, uh, it's actually really nice. It, uh, on the, when you open it up on the cover, it's got a bunch of recommended honing angles, so those are right at your disposal. Um, some of them are actually really good. I, actually, most of them are, are pretty decent uh, recommendations. Uh, if you check out my blog at uh, polthouse.com, I've got additional articles on some honing angles for, for bevels, uh, and some micro bevels, some uh, concepts on flattening the backs of chisels, uh, those sort of things. But uh, this is nice because it's a quick reference guide. And we'll set the top aside. And inside you've got uh, three synthetic stones which sit in this nifty plastic carousel. Um, it's got a coarse, a medium, and a fine. So they pop out of these channels. They're just sitting in these two plastic channels. So if you're on the job side and you nick, dent, or scratch, or otherwise ruin one side of the stone, you can flip it over quick and get back to work without having to, to flatten, you know, or re reshape your stone. Um, to put them back in, they just slide down the channel. Real easy like. Perfect. Um, they sit over top of this great reservoir, which I really like. Uh, it helps keep a lot of the swarf and the oil off of your work surface. Uh, you know, if you're working on a really nice bench or you're, you're actually working on a finished surface of something at a job site, you, know, you don't want that oil to get everywhere. So this is a, a pretty good solution to keep most of it all off of the surface. Um, I've got it sitting on this uh, no-slip mat. This is a, these are great products. I have these all over my workshop. I use them for everything from hand planing to, uh, you saw me using them under my water stones in the water stone video, 
uh, and I've got one set under this. It came with some plastic feet on the bottom, but the oil does manage to make its way, you know, uh, as oil does, uh, all over the place. Um, so it, it wore the adhesive um, off of the little rubber feet um, between that and the constant pressure of sharpening and moving it back and forth. The feet just came off fa actually fairly early. So I just set it on this no skid mat. I, these are another item that I keep separate for each use. Um, my water stones enjoy their own no slip mat as does this. And if I set it on the bench to put a piece of wood on top uh, to hand plane, do some light planing, um, it helps keep the wood from sliding around, but that also gets its own piece. I especially don't want to contaminate that piece of wood with oil from my oil sharpening stones. Uh, it can end up ruining uh, its finishing ability uh, or staining the wood altogether, which uh, you really don't enjoy after you spend a lot of time prepping a piece of wood. <clears throat> um, these long plastic runners on here are great as using for an index when you uh, reference, say we want to flatten the bottom of this, so if you want to reference a gauge depth, it's easy to set your finger against this, uh, this long plastic um, angled piece here. So say I want to flatten the last inch or half inch of this chisel. Again, uh, I don't really see a massive benefit in flattening the entire back of the chisel unless you really like to spend a lot of time uh, sharpening. That's, uh, there's really not a lot of benefit added uh, to sharpening the entire back of, of a blade, uh, whether it's a plain iron or your chisel. Um, because really the only point that's, that's super important is this last little bit. Uh, you know, the rest of this is flat enough that if you're setting it into the shoulder of a, of a tenon or, or a mortise, um, it should remain parallel to the, to the side fairly well. Um, basically you want to get this bottom part nice and flat so that it intersects perfectly with your nice polished sharpened beveled edge. Um, you know, if you don't flatten the back, it's got all those nice big machine marks in it, which under a microscope look like mountains and valleys up on this edge. What you really want is a nice flat, polished surface. Even under the microscope, you want it to be just one nice, long, continuous edge. So we set uh, back to the last inch or half inch on this chisel. I'm able to rest my finger on this plastic guide, which won't give me splinters or braid my fingers off, uh, which is a nice added feature. So then I make sure the chisel back is flat on the stone, apply pressure with these two fingers, both the front and the back of the chisel to assure that it's wearing evenly, make sure it sets evenly, and then gently guide it back and forth with this hand. So just like that. Um, these stones are well saturated with oil. Uh, if this was brand new, I would definitely want to soak these in um, my cutting fluid make sure that they're nice and, and saturated before I get started. Before you do any serious sharpening, you want to add a little bit of oil to the surface. You know, it doesn't take a massive amount, but you want enough to at least have a little sheen on the surface. And then, just like in the, the other stones, uh, in, in a lot of any of the other sharpening techniques, you want to make sure the back of this chisel is flat. I want to work my way across as much of this stone as possible just to assure it stays flat as long as possible. Uh, and again, these, uh, these oil stones are extremely slow wearing. So they, they cut well. They do cut a little bit slower, uh, quite a bit slower actually, than the, uh, the water stones. But they also hollow and dish a lot less. So, um, you know, I had one prior to this that I borrowed from a friend that was almost 20 years old and he had flattened it once in 20 years and it was perfectly flat when I borrowed it from him. Um, a good way to check these out of the box for flatness is to take a, uh, this is an aluminum but they've got all kinds of straight edges, you can get these just about anywhere. This one's made by Pinnacle. Um, you, know, you can check it corner to corner and what I'm looking for is light that's coming from the camera angle towards me, so you can't see it on the back side, but uh, I'm looking for light to be coming under the edge of this straight edge. So I check it corner to corner that way, corner to corner this way, and then across the length here. And it, it looks perfectly flat. I mean, it looks great. And I've, 
Uh, I've had this for a while and I've done a lot of sharpening on it already. Um, and there's zero dish uh, or hollow in any of these stones. So um, another way to check that would be to mark your grid and just flatten it uh, and, and just see how flat it, see how flat it is when you take it across that uh, plate glass or the float glass with sandpaper on it. Uh, if it wears all the lines off right away, it's good and flat. If not, then you're already flattening, so it's a, it's a win-win there. So we'd continue to sh uh, flatten the back of this. Um, there's, there's some additional methods, and I'm going to have to stand to, to show some of these, but there's some additional sharpening methods that you can do. You can hold the chisel like this, set your angle with this finger, or even two fingers to apply enough pressure, and work your way back across the stone. And you want to make sure you're working all the way across the stone. Um, you can also do a W shape. So you go back and forth and back and forth across the stone, making sure that we're not rocking it all over the place. Back and forth and back. And, and as you do this, it'll become more natural uh, and it'll go a lot faster. When storing your oil stones, uh, it's nice to be able to keep them inside their plastic case. Uh, some of these I keep in their original cardboard box. It's a pretty heavy duty cardboard. It's a little oil soaked, but it's good for keeping the dust and dirt off of this stone. Some of these other stones, like for this one that I'm still working on, I'll probably make a wrap out of, uh, out of like an old t-shirt. Uh, or an old pair of jeans will work, just something that can hold oil uh, fairly well and wrap up the stone, just keep it from getting nicked and, and dented. Um, <clears throat> you can store them in like a, a Gladware, Tupperware, uh, depending on your cutting fluid. If you're using kerosene, you might want to use something with an open top. Um, uh, or, or a glass container works really well as well. Uh, there is a some additional information um, put out by Norton uh, almost over a hundred years ago as to the uh, grit sizes and what actually constitutes um, the uh, amount of abrasive in a stone. There is no real industry standard other than the one that Norton produced. There's no legal uh, document that says, you know, an Arkansas black surgical shall have, uh, you know, so many uh, grains per you know, parts per million in the stone. Um, so I will post a link to the Norton standard. It's probably like right up here somewhere. Uh, the, uh, the spreadsheet they have goes into some detail about uh, comparing different types of stones um, and there's one with even some uh, some water stone comparisons as to grit size and fineness. The next video set, I'll be getting into uh, some scary sharp or sandpaper sharpening, uh, which is a really great, really fast method. Um, it's a little bit messier than this because it deals with water, but it's really not too bad. Uh, it's cheap, it's great for woodworkers just getting started because you don't have to spend the money on the stones um, or, or learn the care and use of the stones when you're done with the sandpaper, you just throw it away. So we'll get into a lot of that in the next video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, um, please feel free to post comments on the video uh, on my YouTube channel for Polt House Workshop. Um, post comments on the blog. Uh, the blog is at www.polthouse.com. That's P-O-L-T-H-A-U-S. Um, or shoot me an email at polthouseworkshop at gmail.com. Um, Anything you've got, I'd be willing to hear. Uh, if you've got some ideas for new videos or a blog post you'd like to see, uh, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thank you for checking out the video, and uh, I'll see you next time on Pult House Workshop.